Richard French Live is pleased to present a special tribute commemorating the 150th Battle of Gettysburg as our nation celebrates the 4th of July. It was an epic battle fought over three days, 150 years ago. It was a tragedy and a triumph that reunited a divided country and changed the world. Today they come here from all 50 states and beyond. More than a million people every year. Some come to remember, some come to reflect. Some come to look for a personal connection found among the many monuments and many more tombstones here. They come to Gettysburg, scene of the bloodiest battle ever on American soil. All of them come to learn about the past at a place where history comes alive. Fire! This is a Richard French Live special report on hallowed ground the 150th commemoration of the Battle of Gettysburg. Here is your host, Richard French. Good evening. His name was George Washington Sando. He was 20 years old. And while thousands of men would die during the Battle of Gettysburg, this Union farm boy, he was the first. Young George, he died June 26th 1863 in the small farm town in Pennsylvania, just a little over 200 miles from the Statue of Liberty in the New York Harbor. He was actually shot a few days before the battle began on July 1st when he and a fellow private stumbled upon Confederate scouts. 150 years later, many historians will tell you that Private Sando may or may not have known exactly why the Union had been battling the Confederacy for more than two years the day that he died. But there seems near universal agreement that his death and the sacrifice of thousands and thousands of others at the Battle of Gettysburg was the turning point in a war that saved the Union, ended slavery, and sanctified Gettysburg as a place of reverence and remembrance to this day. The war, of course, had started in April of 1861. That's when Confederates opened fire on Union forces at Fort Sumter in South Carolina. But the origins of the Civil War itself remain debated by historians 150 years after Confederate and Union forces turned the cornfields surrounding Gettysburg into killing fields. Still, most seem to agree that the main explanation was slavery and anger in the South that Northern attempts to end it would violate the principle of quote unquote, states' rights. We'll leave those kinds of questions and the finer details of Civil War history to the historians. Tonight, though, we take a look at some of the connections to the Battle of Gettysburg right here, both from New York and New Jersey, and remember some of those who died in the name of freedom. We'll take you to the spot where Union soldiers from regiments such as New York's 67th Infantry Division of Long Island fought and died. And we will walk the hallowed grounds where the men of New Jersey's 6th Volunteer Regiment stood and fought 150 years ago. And we will visit the scene of one of history's most famous speeches. I'm talking, of course, about Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. And it was during that address that the 16th President of the United States said, among other things, the following, quote, These dead shall not have died in vain. This nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from earth. That again, President Lincoln in Gettysburg in 1863. Well, 150 years later, history has proven President Lincoln right. But in his famous address, Abe Lincoln also said this, the world will little note nor long remember what we say here. President Lincoln got that part wrong. Christine Mitchell and Michael Mitchick, they remember. Christine has visited Gettysburg more than 20 times. They, they suffered so horribly here, and uh, it's so easy to forget that. It's so easy to just come here and treat it like a tourist attraction, but it, it's not. It's, it's a hallowed ground. It, it's a very special place. It's unlike any place I've ever been. Andrew and Annie Mitchell remember. They came to visit Gettysburg 
from South Carolina. Whenever you have battle or war and people, are, people die for um, the reason that they fight wars, um, you naturally will have to give credit to those that gave their life for that purpose. And so that's why the ground is hollow. Dan Loring and Ella Damoski, they remember. They came to Gettysburg from Alaska. Long road trip, uh, we certainly wanted to see the uh, 150th anniversary. Uh, big event, um, uh, incredible leadership, and uh, we've never been here before. We wanted to experience it firsthand. The whole world seems to remember, too. Tons of stuff. They were all, all used in Civil War hospitals. At the Gettysburg Visitor Center, volunteers, they've been preparing for the commemoration for months now. A week of 150th commemorative events bringing members of the media from around the globe. One commemoration organizer, Stacy Fox, thinks that she knows why. For many, Gettysburg is the mecca of the Civil War. It is believed to be the turning point of the Civil War, and there are people not only from all over this country, but from all over the world. The Battle of Gettysburg had happened mostly by chance. Regiments of Confederate generals Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia, they were marching north. Regiments of Union General George Meade's Army of the Potomac marching south. It was inevitable that the forces would eventually meet. That it happened at Gettysburg, that was never expected. But it was a confrontation which would change the course of the war and American history itself. On that day, the Union's Joshua Chamberlain who would become a Brigadier General and be awarded the Medal of Honor for gallantry at Gettysburg, he received word 35 miles to the south that the forces had collided. He mustered his men for a hard, fast, and long march north. His thoughts of the various events on and off the battlefield are recorded in his diary. Rations were scarcely issued, and the men about preparing supper when rumors that the enemy had been encountered that day near Gettysburg absorbed every other interest, and very soon, orders came to march forthwith to Gettysburg. The rolling Pennsylvania landscape of 1863 provided the kind of cover a general wanted and needed, and Confederate General Robert E. Lee, fresh off a year-long campaign defeating Union forces at clashes in the Second Battle of Bull Run and the Battle of Chancellorville, was by all accounts a confident Confederate commander. Union commander George Meade, he was new to his job and would ultimately end the fighting in a battle within a battle so violent and bloody that it earned its own name, Pickett's Charge. But by the time the three-day battle ended, the dead, wounded, or missing would number some 50,000. That's one reason why for many, Gettysburg is hallowed ground. And there were many sacrifices at Gettysburg. There was also a slaughter. These scenes from the fighting at Gettysburg are from a cyclorama painted by a French artist and unveiled in 1883. It was restored seven years ago and is a popular attraction now at the park. As depicted by the cyclorama, National Park Service historians who take visitors around the battlefield every day they describe the scene at the end of the conflict as cataclysmic. First-hand stories abound in diaries and documents held in Park Service archives. The battle brought devastation to the residents of Gettysburg. Every farm, field, or garden was a graveyard. Churches, public buildings, and even private homes were hospitals filled with wounded soldiers. Today, it might be hard to imagine such carnage over just three days. The total dead over the entire course of the Vietnam War for a frame of reference numbered some 58,000. It's said the Confederate wagon train of wounded sent back to Virginia after the battle was 17 miles long. Coming up next on this special tribute, meet these patriots who keep history alive by reenacting some of Gettysburg's most dramatic moments and later find out how a group from New Jersey honor those who lived and died there. This special tribute on hallowed ground, the 150th commemoration of the Battle of Gettysburg, will continue on Richard French Live.